Welcome back, a day in the life of a Dallas Cowboy fan podcast, episode 14. And today, we have a good episode. We're going to talk about should Dallas Cowboy fans believe in Dak Prescott once and for all? Is Micah Parsons a selfish player? And we'll review each conference championship game in the best Super Bowl scenario. Stay tuned. All right, so topic number one. Episode 14, Day in the Life of a Dallas Cowboy Fan. The finalists for multiple awards has been set. And the Dallas Cowboys has owned each list. So just thinking about that, you know, we have finally we have multiple finalists for multiple awards. There is no way in the world that we're not in the conference championship right now. Like, somebody has to be fired. Somebody has to be fired. We have multiple finalists. For the top awards of the NFL season, and we got sent home in the wild card. Let that sink in. It hurts. It hurts. But anyway, let's get to these awards. For the MVP, we have Dak Prescott. He's an MVP finalist, right? Now, will Dak Prescott win MVP? No. No. Will he finish Top three, yes. I think there's four finalists. I honestly think Dak will finish number two behind Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar has it still signed, delivered. Lamar Jackson is going to get his second MVP of his young career. But I think Dak Prescott will finish second. If the Dallas Cowboys would have beat the Miami Dolphins that night, I think Dak would have won the award. After we lost that, his chances went out the window. But I think Lamar is going to win it. I think Dak will finish second. And I think CMC will finish third, not Brock Purdy. I think CMC will finish third in voting. But um, yeah, that's the one. That's one award that the Dallas Cowboys had a finalist. The next one, Offensive Player of the Year award. We had two finalists: Dak Prescott, he was a finalist, and Ceedee Lamb, he was a finalist. Now, if I'm totally honest with you, I think CMC is going to win that award. But again, you know, we have two players that were a finalist for Offensive Player of the Year. Not Offensive Player of the Week. Of the year. Of the whole NFL season, we have two finalists in CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott. And somehow, once again, we're home. We've been watching since the wild card round, right? Now, who do I think? I already said it, CMC. I think Dak will finish ahead of CD when it comes to voting. But hey, that's Crazy to think that we have two players up for that award. The next award, Defensive Player of the Year award. Guess how many players we have finalists for Defensive Player of the Year? Two. Deron Bland and Micah Parsons. Now, I'll be honest with you. One of the Dallas Cowboy players has a chance to win any of these awards. It will be Defensive Player of the Year. And it will be Deron Bland, not Micah Parsons. Because Deron Bland... We had like eight intercept, nine interceptions, I want to say, six pick sixes. That's hard to do. That's history right there. So I think Deron Bland has a small chance of winning. But if I had to put my money on it, if I had to make a parlay, I'm going with uh, Miles Garrett. I think Miles Garrett has that word locked up. But, you know, there's a small chance that, you know, Deron Bland could sneak in there because he had nine interceptions, six pick sixes. But, again, to have two finalists for the Defensive Player of the Year award from one team, and that team was sent home wild card, somebody has to get fired. I'm just keeping it real. But, you know, that goes to show you that, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, for the past 28 years, we've been a strong regular season team, and we have yet to get it done in the postseason. It is what it is. It's wearing to bridge. There's always next year. Um, but, yeah, we had a good season. Um, too bad. Unfortunately, we couldn't roll that regular season success into the postseason. But it is what it is. You know, we had a good year, and um, I'm happy with our roster as of right now. But it's strange to me, leading leading me into my next segment, how Dallas Cowboy fans are treating certain players, not all players, they're treating specific players a certain way, right? Let's get into it. Micah Parsons. The Dallas Cowboy fan base has the nerve to come at Micah Parsons. Not only the best defensive player 
on his team, probably the best overall player on the Dallas Cowboys. Probably a top three defensive player of the NFL. We decide to attack that individual. Like, I get it. We need help at the off-ball linebacker position. I get it. We were really, really bad against the run. But the answer to that is to not attack your best player. Like, it's instances like that that makes it hard being a Dallas Cowboy fan. Not because we lost in the wild card. Not because we haven't won in 28 years. It's because our fan base continues to make us look stupid. We are we always blame the wrong person, right? We can't stop the run. Our defense let us down the second half of the season. Who do we blame? Not Dan Quinn, not the defensive coordinator who sold us out versus the Packers. Let's blame our best defensive player. Uh, We never have any really, really good off-season free agency signings, right? Who do we blame? We blame Jerry Jones, not the actual person who's in charge of signing players, Jerry's son, Stephen Jones. He's the person we should be blaming. But no, we're incompetent, and we blame Jerry Jones because his name is everywhere. Do Cowboy fans know that Jerry Jones is the only reason why we signed Deion Sanders back in the day, which got us a Super Bowl ring? But no, let's blame Jerry. Another example. Our offense, clueless what they're doing in the postseason. When it comes to the postseason, we out there looking like sitting ducks scared. Who do we blame? Dak Press. Actually, that might be Dak's fault. But y'all get the point. How are we blaming Micah Parsons for our bad play? Right? Like, I don't understand. There are certain individuals on the Cowboys that you can you can blame all you want. And you're making the right decision, right? You can blame Dak. The past couple years in the playoffs, Dak has stunk it up. Twice against the 49ers, has looked horrible for three and a half quarters. Then he also always wants to play really good in the last half of the fourth quarter, whatever. You can blame Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy time management is awful. His play calling against the Packers was awful. He went back to his regular season. First half of the season ways of going run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. Awful. You can blame uh, Mike McCarthy, right? You can blame Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, the second half of the season, I think it was after the Miami Dolphins game, maybe the Buffalo Bills game. He was horrible. You can blame him. How do you blame Micah Parsons? Like, I think. Either we have fans who just don't know what they're talking about or they just want to blame somebody so they blame the biggest name. Like, I really don't I really don't think people understand how good Michael Parsons is. And if we lose that piece, if we lose that individual, if we lose that player, we're gonna go three and fourteen. Right? So let me let me talk about some stats. Of the player you guys want to blame and pretty much want to run out of the city and make us be a horrible team, right? Because I'll be honest with you, some of these fans we deserve to be three and fourteen because they don't know how what's bad, what's really bad. Us making it into the playoffs, there's some teams who never make it to the playoffs. We make it every year. I know we don't go far, but at least we have a team that can make the playoffs every year, right? So for you guys who want to blame Micah Parsons. For our mishap, saying he's selfish because he allegedly said he doesn't want to play linebacker. He just wants to play pass rusher. You're calling him lazy because you guys know playing pass rusher is easy. Just go rush the quarterback. Take, just, just go. Take some motor. You don't have to use the brain. Playing linebacker, you have to use your brain. You have to dissect the play. You have to do this. You have to do that. Michael Parsons is like, yo, I just want to rush the quarterback. You want to blame him because he wants to rush the quarterback and he wants to get paid top dollar because those edge rushers, they get that money, right? You wouldn't blame that guy. Let me ask you a question. Did y'all know that only four players in the Super Bowl era 
managed more sacks in their first three seasons than Micah Parsons. Those players were Al Baker. Don't know who that is. Reggie White, a great. Derek, Derek Thompson, a great. And Al Don Smith. Those are the only players to have more sacks than Micah Parsons in their first three years in the NFL. And y'all want to blame that individual for our breakdown in the playoffs. Y'all want to run that player out of Dallas. When we go 3-14, and 14, who y'all going to blame then? But after that Micah Parsons rant, I have a legit question for you guys. In all honesty, do you still believe in Dak Prescott? Right? Now, that's a tough question because the man just was named the finalist for the MVP award. How can you sit here and say, I don't trust that guy? Yeah, he almost won MVP. Yeah, he led us to three straight 12 win seasons, but I don't trust him. It's like, it's kind of when you think about it and you say it out loud, it's, it's comical. Like, yo, you could be sitting here with Desmond Ritter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be sitting here with Joe Schmo. You have an MVP finalist who led you to three straight 12 win seasons. But still, I mean, it's hard. It's still kind of hard to believe in him with his postseason track record. Like, yo, <laughs> those those 49ers loss, losses, plural, they still hurt. That Packers loss a couple weeks ago, it still hurts. Like, that's the first wound that I'm just not getting over. So when you initially ask me, yo, you believe in Dak? No, answer is no. Mm -mm. Why would I do what? Who? What? Why? Why? Right? And then I came over this, I came across this one stat. Not even. I came across this one tweet. Let me pull it up for you. It said, all right, take this with a grain of salt. Since Dak Prescott has entered the NFL in 2016, the following teams have won a Super Bowl. Patriots, Eagles, Chiefs, Rams, and Bucks. Five teams. Five teams are, are, are able to say they accomplished more than Dak Prescott in eight years. And then it goes to say, so unless you're rooting for participation trophies of the NFC titles, spare me what the DAC has done nothing. So have 26 other teams have done the same amount that he has done. Only five teams has done more. So when I read that, I started thinking to myself like, dang, they right. You know, unless we're talking about participation awards in the conference championship, only five teams have had better outcomes of NFL seasons than Dak Prescott because well, there's only five champions since he entered the league. I'm like, dang, all right, maybe Dak isn't that bad when you think about it that way. And then I thought a little longer and said, hold up. Man, I'm not pinning myself in the same pair of shoes as the Jets, as the Titans, as the Panthers. I'm not accompanying, I'm not trying to compare myself with them losers. Just because those 26 other teams have are losers and haven't won anything doesn't make me feel better. Like, all right, well, there's 26 other losers in the NFL. It's not that bad. Only five teams have won Super Bowls. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, I'm mad at that. Because we ain't win nothing. I'm not taking part. And, yes, I'll take the participation award. I'll take the NFC, camp, NFC Conference Championship game, the NFC Conference Championship title. I'll take that participation award. Because at least we won something, right? We we not we haven't won anything. Now, if Dak has gotten us to one, maybe two conference championships, yes, the heat is off his back. But we haven't gotten past the divisional round. So I don't care if only five teams have won since he's been in the league. Yes, I'm still mad. Because we, we're not one of those five teams. We didn't even get a chance to become one of those five teams because we made we never made it to the Super Bowl. So Going back to the question, do I still believe in Dak Prescott? I know he's a good quarterback. I know he's still a top 12 quarterback in the NFL. I know he'll always get the Cowboys to the playoffs. I just don't think he can lead us to the Super Bowl and ultimately not winning us a Super Bowl. 
So do I believe in him? I do to an extent. I mean, I believe in him getting us to the playoffs. I believe in him, you know, having a good year. But anything past wild card, past divisional, I don't believe in him. It is what it is. Well, do I still want him to be our quarterback? Yeah, for sure. Unless you can somehow get a Patrick Mahomes, a Joe Burrow. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I still, I don't know if I'll take Josh Allen because Josh Allen throws too many interceptions, and he hasn't won anything just like Dak. You know, I take maybe a C.J. Stroud over Dak because he's young and upcoming. But other than that, it's like there's not too many quarterbacks you can really say, yo, he can win us a Super Bowl before Dak. There's only a handful of quarterbacks in the NFL that I can legit say that quarterback's going to win a Super Bowl one day. So I do, but I don't believe in Dak. It is what it is. So let it's time to go over these conference championship games, right? Review the game real quick. Choose a winner. Let's start with the NFC. We have the 49ers versus the Lions. Now, two, three weeks ago, I would say, oh, the 49ers are winning that game easy. But I'll be honest with you. Last week, the 49ers didn't look good at all. Yes, they beat the Packers because, I mean, Jordan Love had that bad throw at the end of the game. But offensively, defensively, the 49ers didn't look good. Let's be honest, you know. They have been scary all year besides. I, initially, I was thinking that, but, you know, in the second half, the rust didn't, you know, shake. They didn't shake the rust off. The Baltimore Ravens, which we'll talk about a little later, they were the same way in the first half. But that second half, they came out flying. They knocked that rust off after halftime. The 49ers never got that rust off. And they played a bad game last week. Let's be honest. Um, when it comes to Detroit Lions, they're a tough team. They're, they're a tough team. They're gritty. Um, they got some nice pieces. You know, Amos Ross St. Brown, top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. Um, I like Jameer Gibbs. I run it back. They got David Montgomery. He's a dog. And, you know, their defense, hit or miss. I mean, I like the Aiden Hutchinson guy. You know, their secondary isn't too good, but they can get the job done. I think this conference championship game will either be a blowout in favor of the 49ers. Like, if the 49ers just come out, Guns blazing, rust shaking off, they can blow out the Lions easily. But if they don't come out strong and fast, and this is a tight game towards to the end, it's going to be a close game, I'm taking the Lions solely because, yes, I understand the 49ers have a better roster. But if, if they're going neck and neck over to the fourth quarter, it's going to come down to quarterback play. And Jared Goff is a better quarterback than Brock Purdy, even though Brock Purdy was in the NF MVP um, candidate race and who will probably finish top three, top four in votes. Jared Goff is a better quarterback. And I will be more confident with Jared Goff with the game on the line than Brock Purdy. Right. So if it's going to be a blowout, I got 49ers. If it's going to be a, you know, a bloodbath punch for punch fight, I'm taking the lines. Ultimately, I think it is going to be a blowout. Ultimately, I think the 49ers, they shook the rust off. And I think they, they come out like the week one through 15 49ers and beat the brakes off the lines. Right. So I got the 49ers coming out of the NFC championship game. As for the AFC championship, you can't count out the Chiefs, man. It's hard. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like every year they get Patrick Mahomes less and less and less weapons. And somehow he's back in the conference championship. There's this there's stat that every season that Patrick Mahomes has been the starter of the Kansas City Chiefs, they've been to the conference championship. That's what I need Dak to do. Every year since Patrick Mahomes has been in the NFL starting, he's been in the conference championship. Whether he won a game or lost, he got his team there. That's what we need in Dallas, right? And that's an impressive stat. Just think about it. His rookie year, he didn't start. So that year doesn't count towards this stat. But from year two and on, he's been in the conference championship, right? So everybody knows the Chiefs. They've been here before. Um, 
they're a good team because their quarterback, you know, Travis Kelsey, I honestly think Travis Kelsey has taken a step back this year, but he's still a legit threat. You know, the running back, Isaiah Pacheco, he's a good running back, runs hard. You know, their defense, before I thought their defense was trash. Their defense is sneaky good. Their defense is sneaky good. It's just if Patrick Mahomes had one legit target, one legit target, that wasn't young because Rice is pretty good, but he's so young. If he had one legit target, I'm taking Kansas City against anybody. But having no legit weapons and going against that Baltimore's Ravens team, man, you can't tell me the Ravens ain't going to win this game. Like, it's, I, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game because even though the Ravens have a good defense, I think Patrick Mahomes is still going to get his. But at the end of the day, I'm taking the Ravens to win this game. They've been hot all year long. All year long. And Lamar Jackson, who's about to win his second MVP of his young career, I think they can get the job done. Right? So when it comes to Super Bowl matchups, I think best case scenario, nobody wants to see the Chiefs make it again. It's like the Jordan back in the 90s. Like, yo, the Bulls made it again. I'm tired of seeing them. Nobody wants to see the Chiefs make it. Right? I think... You can look at it in multiple ways, right? I feel like the best matchup where best team versus best team, it will be the Ravens versus the 49ers. But I think us as an NFL fan society, we messed that up because we called out the NFL. Everybody saying the NFL is scripted. You know, they have the NFL theories and the NFL logo has purple for the Ravens, red for the 49ers. So it's been scripted since week one. I feel like we messed that up and now we won't get that matchup. It is what it is. I believe in them theories, right? They say, oh, let's just go ahead and make the, the two teams, the Super Bowl logo, and make everything nice. We called out for them. We called them out for the BS. Now, nah, I don't think we'll get that matchup. But best case scenario, I think that is the strongest opponent versus opponent, the best game. What I think the people want to see, I think the people want to see Detroit versus the Ravens. Because, again, nobody wants to see the Chiefs back again. Everybody wants to see Lamar get there. And the, the Lions are like an underdog story. That gritty team that came from being 0-16 back in the day to making it to the Super Bowl. So I think the people want to see Ravens versus Lions. And then the worst possible matchup, in all honesty, is probably Chiefs versus Lions. Because, like I said, nobody wants to see the Chiefs play. And, you know, we had to rank these teams from best team to worst team, I think the Lions will probably come in number four, even though they're a top four team left in the NFL season. I think Chiefs versus Lions, that matchup would be like, ah, the, the views might be down. And if we think the NFL is scripted, they gonna need they like to have in their views. So that's the one matchup I don't think us will have. Chiefs versus Lions. Now, if you were to give me 10 chips, right? 10 chips, spread them out, give each team how many chips you want, and the confidence I think they'll have of not only making the Super Bowl, but winning the Super Bowl. And I can give, like, for instance, I can give the Ravens 10 chips. I have to, you know, spread them out a little bit here or there. If I had 10 chips of which team will win the Super Bowl, I will put, I will put five chips in the 49ers bowl. I will put Four chips in the Ravens bowl. And then I'll put one chip in a Chiefs bowl. Right? So you gave me 10 chips. Yo, put these chips in these bowls who you think has the best chance of winning the Super Bowl. Oh, 49ers, they're getting five off the rip. Ravens, yeah, I'm giving them four. I got one chip left between the Lions and Chiefs. I think I think uh Patrick Mahomes can win it before the Lions. So I give the Chiefs a last chip. Right, comment below how you distribute in your chips. But me, I think 49ers have the best chance than the Ravens, than the Chiefs.